What's going on guys? Luke here from Mr. FBA UK. Right, this is going to be a really jam-packed video on all the ways that I replenish online arbitrage products to all the way through to how, what and how I do it. Maybe looking just for those extra nook and crannies. It's surprising how this time last year, when I was probably, what we in now? June, maybe six months into my Amazon journey, I probably just use FBA Wizard and a sourcing list from from somewhere. Um, I've definitely tried other ones like Tactical Arbitrage, and I've tried them all. I've tried them all. My first year in Amazon was more testing and getting a feel for it, learning and testing. It, you know, as long as I can pay myself a salary. Which, which is what I did after, I think I quit, my, I quit my job after four months or something. So I started in December 2016, it's my first month, did £1,000 sales, £1,200 sales I think, in that December, literally just starting testing, seeing what, what was going on. And I felt like I was just, to me that was amazing, £1,200 in my first month, I was like, oh my god, you know. And from there, I think I quit my job in April, uh, and I've been paying myself... I pay myself about one thousand five hundred pounds a month, sometimes less. It depends if I need it. Uh, like I checked last month, I think I pay myself one thousand one hundred and fifty. So you know, I don't want to. For example, I don't want to pay myself for the sake of paying myself. I'd rather reinvest that money, keep it in the business because obviously that's going to compound and create me more money later on. So it's better to take a bonus maybe after Christmas, something like that, which is probably sure everyone does anyway. So just so you know, even if you're reinvesting a couple hundred quid extra, instead of paying myself that full amount, putting a couple hundred quid back in, it's also a buff. You know, you never know what you're gonna have to pay out accountancy here, fees there. There's always something happening, isn't there? Um, when you wish you had that extra money. So you know, I do that. But um, I'm gonna go over all the ways. There's at least ten ways to find extra products. Um, and some of them you might even be replenishables, but there's still extra products to buy. Uh, day to day that you might have not already thought of and I've literally come across 10 ways uh, and I've got them all written down so I will be looking at my notes because it's, I don't want to miss anything and it might be a little bit of a long video uh, but I, it, to me this is like I've, I've, I've almost solidified a, a perfect way of almost not running out of potential products to purchase now in the last three months I keep running out of money like I'm buying uh, I can spend a thousand pounds in 10 minutes uh, not all the time of course um, but you know I think I, yeah between well I, I stopped doing it over a thousand pound because it was holding up the order so basically I was doing like two lots of 900 or you know I literally just chucking money just into into various stock and I, I, I keep running out like I've got VAT next month oh, well, in a couple of weeks and stuff like this and it's I, I've got to be a little bit more careful now uh, I've got to just like, hold on to a bit, which is a bit annoying, but it's just part and parcel of the of the game. Uh, so I pay every quarter. So, you know, I have one month where I, I have to hold back a little bit for the VAT. Um, and then I, have, I just go through full throttle. As soon as that VAT is paid, I go full throttle for two months, just reinvesting, reinvesting as much as I can. Uh, which which then means the third month I have, to, I have a little bit of hold back on the purchasing. But for the two months, these 10 points, I'm just all over. Uh, and I'm going to go over exactly what I do, literally. I'm even going to show you some of my old purchases from this time last year to show you how, you know, and what, even just to get ideas as well. So we'll just start off, right. So, I use FBA Wizard, um, which I'm sure many of you know exactly what it is. Obviously, this is it. You know, I've just ran a quick super drug scan in just some random categories just to see if I can pick anything up. To show you live, or whatever this is, not live, but you know me. Um, I don't know if it will come up with anything, but I can talk you through it otherwise. So I'll just go over my settings quickly. When I use, now I, I broke it down into different sections. I, for me, FBA Wizard, because it's used by so many people, it cannot be a reliant on. So you cannot rely solely on FBA Wizard. You can if you're not looking to really make this into an expansive business. Or make it into something really serious um, or if you're looking for more slow growth if you're not too worried maybe a full-time job and just looking a little bit of income you could just use FBA wizard um, but realistically not so I attribute 20% of my sourcing to FBA wizard 
maybe a little bit more if you because I sort of expand on it a bit from the results I get from FBA Wizard. But I'd say about 20% of my current, anyway, current purchases in the last, say, three months have come from FBA Wizard. So I call it a bit of a filler. It's £67 a month I pay, so but it might be more for new subscribers. Um, but I pay 60, you know, for 67 quid for 20% of my infantry and a potentially a couple of other things that I'll show you later. It is, you know, it's, it's nothing. If, if a little bit here, a little bit there uh, is making the difference. Then you really have to look at the whole, your whole Amazon business as, as a whole. Uh, if you're really looking to make some serious money year to year, um, so okay. Anyway, so my settings, I don't do much on FBA Wizard. I don't fa like faff around with all this. Uh, I do sometimes just to test it. I don't, you know, I literally just the main ones I do. I mainly source in beauty, groceries, toys and games. Sometimes, you know, home, usual, basically every category. I'd say at the moment I'm not really buying any toys, so I won't go on to you know all these toy websites here. I remember, you know, like, like your Disney or Toys R Us. I might do it quickly just to see if there's a couple of items because I know roughly the items that are popular. Um, but I will usually just stick to say Super Drug and stuff like that because I'm looking for more of the beauty items. Um, but obviously everyone does these scans anyway, so it's not like I'm going to be be full of results or full of greats, you know, gems as they call them. I don't even really know if gems exist anymore. They probably only exist if you're doing retail arbitrage. That's pretty pretty much it. If you're doing online arbitrage, 30% to 50% is going to be your max. I can't really see you find it unless you are able to get it. You know, the only way you can do it is if you're doing click and collect and you're getting it today, and then you're sending that product today, and then your product or box is booking in within like three days. That's the only way you'll be able to get more than 50%. I see. So at Christmas time, I sometimes do that. I'm Every minute counts almost. Just I don't know. You almost have to go full, even more full out. You have to almost do two people's worth of jobs. So maybe just go a little bit lighter in the year, knowing that for three months, even four months, you're going to go. You're going to basically have to compound that and just do some stupid hours to really make some great money, because everyone knows now. Like Q4 was my first month, so first Q4 last year, and I sort of got an insight into what it could be this year and. Everyone, if you've done one one Q4, proper Q4, you know exactly what I'm about. So, let's just have a quick look. A few results. I'll show you exactly what I do there, um, but let's just have a quick look. So, I always search by ROI, uh, and I normally do, for, for quick offhand, you know, to check what's going on, I won't take my time looking at the item, looking at the price, looking at this, looking at the profit. I literally will look at the number of sellers here. This is the first thing I look at, number of sellers. Um, and roughly the sales, and I just glance over these. So I, I've looked at this, but then I look at here. It says three straight away three pack. So I will not click on this item. Straight away here three pack. Okay, so this is a quick way. Like you don't want to spend ages sourcing. It's not really that fun, is it? You know, it's the it's not the worst part, but counting is probably the worst part. I mean, and this, sorry if anyone's an accountant, but you know, I've studied accounting and it is so depressing. Uh, anyway, so here I'll just show you what I mean. You can see it's pretty much the same item. Um, potentially, you that that looks like a newer version of the packaging, but ultimately the item's the same. Um, it's it's you know buyer's choice if you want to buy that. But if you click here, you'll see that it's just a unit of one, um, one item. Okay, it's not in stock. Fine, doesn't matter. I'm not that worried uh, because this is a pack of three. So you can see here, so I won't even worry. I'll literally be like four sellers. Cool. Okay, 109%, one pound's fine. I think over one pound I'm happy with because, you know, I just, you, you got to find these items aren't, you can't find 200% items. you got to really find the items like, you know, a million of these is going to make you a million pounds. So you got to look at, I see it as, a lot of people are very, very specific in their searches and, and their ROIs and they, they get all like, it almost seems like they're just wound up about this, that, and that needs to be that, needs to be just, you know, just you see in that, sell... 20 of them a month and you, you know you got, yeah it's 20 quid but you sell 400 you know five six seven hundred items and you're good as gold you know so straight away three three pack I won't search it um, it looks like a good item three pack so I won't even click three pack nope potential one seller no Vaseline body gel potential okay was sold by Amazon no I'm not let's click it better than half price usually what you're looking for 
intensive care, da da da, pure cocoa butter, you don't really need to look at too much, 200 mils, back here, click this, 8.50, there you are, boom, first item. Uh, and if you really want to check, I use FBA multi tool at the moment, so 269, you would just uh, 269 calculate, and I, I pay VAT as well, so my amount here is, you know, but also I'd look here and say you could, Amazon could jump back on the listing and then your products are obsolete, or you know, pretty close, because Amazon are going to be selling it at four pounds and you've, you spent on it, oh yeah, you're not going to make any money. At the moment, no, so maybe just test the waters here. You can see it's jumped around with price, so it, you could sell it anywhere from 8. I, I look at the bottom price and be like, if it jumped back down to 8.50, which it is, fine, will I make money? Not, I'm, it's selling at 17, so I'm going to act like it's 17, but it's not. So I usually use this bottom price as my worst case scenario, even though I could sell it here. Um, so great, yeah, but Amazon could jump back on, so maybe not buy anything too stupid on that item. But there you go, there's an item you can just um, buy if you want. Um, so let's just jump back out. So here, um, and so on. Yeah, just keep going down, and I, I use it as fillers, so I don't spend too long. As I said, through, you know, I don't look at the, um, what's it called? The If it's these packs of threes and stuff, it's got like, if it has two sellers, I won't look at it. If it has three sellers, I might look at it and see if it has had more sellers. Um, and it's just like really popular at the moment or something. Um, or if it's out of stock on the current website and the sellers is reasonably low, it's probably because it's sold out everywhere. Uh, and that's what it says. Like. But I'll just show you my um, settings, really, really, really basic settings. Look, look at this, that, that. Just select some random settings, 22%. Da, da, da. That is it. I'm even though I wouldn't really take that, I'm just doing it so I can have full scope of every potential purchase. Because sometimes you find really good items, but if you didn't do 22%, if you, I don't know, you know, you would find that um, you missed you miss them. So you'd rather, I'd rather just spend a, like an extra couple of minutes finding something uh, than not. So I would say this is contribute, and you can see this is what I've done before. My scan results is pretty standard. There's nothing too crazy on here. This is just, you know, and I literally will just repeat. I don't even half of them I've never been on. So that's how much sort of attention I put towards FBA Wizard. Um, but for sixty-seven pounds, even if I just cover it now and then every every other month, just because I know the finding thing, that's fine. Because you know I want as much potential for Q4 as well. So I'm not thinking about now. If I quit the subscription. And sign back up for what ninety nine dollars ninety nine pounds. Um, at Christmas, I'm just like, well, it's only a couple of months till I would be searching for it. I'd rather just keep it all year round uh, and go from there. So another quick thing I'll show you is from this, you could actually do something interesting. So we will go. I'm just going to use that item again as an example. Now it might not exist, which is if it doesn't, it doesn't. So this is the item that we we saw. Yeah. Um, now another thing you can do is you can find out what one item's worth. Obviously, it's worth two sixty nine. Now a great way is that you know with FBA fees, usually you have a fixed lower value fee. So you know, for example, if if you're selling for something for four pounds, the fees won't be a, the same percentage, uh, like the fulfillment fees and stuff, as I can selling for ten pound. Like you know, there's only so much, only so much of a price that they can. It costs Amazon. So, say it costs a minimum two pound fifty to send an item. If you're selling it for ten pounds and it's of whatever size, or you're selling it for four ninety nine, it will still be that two pound fifty because obviously it costs them a a break even point. Or even if they're making a loss, it will be a certain you know you know what I'm talking about the fulfillment fees. Um, so a great way to get some extra value from that item maybe that you don't think. Uh, can sell maybe this isn't selling at eight fifty. It's selling for six ninety nine. So you're getting down to that sort of bottom bottom value that you can't really make that much money on. Maybe a pound. Um, what you can do is just do this. So you go into the search bar at the top. Sorry, you can't see it. I've, my settings are a bit funny. But I'm just going to copy and paste in the search bar at the top this item. I press enter. So that's the start. So we're just going to see what comes up. This is the item that we were talking about a minute ago. 
this seems to be well, you know how Amazon is, they have about a million items, all the same product, da 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 da, -da. Uh, and what you can do is you can just type in next in the search bar next to what you've already typed in two pack. And I know you might be thinking, okay. And this has come up. Uh, I normally scroll down and have another look here. Pack of three. Really, really, you know, this is if this is just like I would call a slightly more like uh, advanced searching. Um, right, let's click on this one. I think this is probably yeah. It doesn't look like you can do FBA. It might be hazmat. That's a quick look. Just because there's not much going on. Okay, there's no hazmat. No, but you can see here, it's also sort of pretty, pretty crap. There's nothing going on there. But say that this was not the rank that we were talking about of 140. That was this was 50,000 or 25,000. So a bit worse than obviously a one pack. But if you're then buying um, this original item now for two, what was that? Vaseline 269. Let's get a calculator out. 269. You're going to times that by three. It comes to 807. Eight pound seven for three. And all you've got to do is put it into a a poly bag to bundle that. Um, so we jump back to the listing, and let's say that this, let's just say for example, this would sell at 14. Uh, let's be realistic here. 16.99. You can play around with it, but this is an example, and it's not a very good example because the sales aren't that great. Uh, but I don't want to spend too long searching and wasting your time. But let's say this is a good item. Well, decent enough item. It was selling five a month, six a month, seven whatever. Uh, and the price was reasonable. Now the fulfillment fee for the bundle shouldn't, I don't know the exact, so the total, the fees here, you would have to play around with the, the single pack and check this against the single pack to see what the fees are, but the actual total fees wouldn't be much higher than the single pack. So I've just typed in there, 16.99807. Now this, in, this here is the fees without the 18 and that sort of thing, 472. Well, if we jump back to the single item, let's just remember 472. Uh, now, this is like I'm selling for like half of what I was I would have sold the other item as. Okay. Uh, and that's just typing the buy price because it doesn't come up with the fees unless you do that. Now it's 325. Yeah, so it's about half here. But it's not double. It's not half the half the costs or half the fees of what it was on the on the premium or the three pack. So even though it's three times, it's not three times the FBA fees. And so you're able to find items that might not be profitable or just in the borderline. Or this one's okay. Um, and actually find the bundle version. Um, and with that bundle version, you can make good profit. And actually, because it doesn't doesn't come up on scans because FBA wizard doesn't doesn't understand multiples, so it can't search for. A well, maybe it can, but I can't find a way of it searching bundle packs, um, say like a three pack, and actually realizing that's three of this item and just tripling the cost. You'll see on FBA Wizard, you'll never see on this left side or the item as a more than one pack. It will say three pack because the Amazon listing is the three pack. But the left hand side will always be a single pack. Um, but say, you know, if you're looking at something quite, you know, this product's quite, would be quite popular. Uh, like you know Vaseline cocoa this one here uh, you know oh that's the one we did uh, but you know this this Vaseline's a good brand cocoa body gel it sounds it sounds something that people be buying same here simple kind of skin hydrating cleansing oil you can actually find a, pro a product that is on the borderline or probably not profitable and then just find the bundle version and there's going to be less sellers on the bundle version because it doesn't appear in the scans but it only takes you two seconds to type in two pack three pack four pack or six pack it's normally the sizes and you can actually create you know you could find the one pack at say a pound so you buy four of them then you find it's a two pack at profitable so you buy eight of them and before you know it you bought 50 packs of the same item across and you're selling across five listings but only about eight sales or ten sales because you're buying some six packs so that's one sale a couple of them a couple of the and before you know it, you've actually got some good profit from one item um, and it's not actually many sales to turn through all that to turn through the whole value that you purchased so you're not buying 50 and have to do 50 sales 
to obviously make up your make your money back. So the turnover or you know the cash flow, for example, for cash flow, is turning through in a in a week instead of like five weeks or six weeks, and it's the same thing. All you're doing is bundling it, and the bundle versions are just going to be better better profit because there should be less people on the listings because they're not going to actually have actually gone in that much depth, you know. So, I mean, I'm only step two through. There's ten. There's ten steps, you know. Um, and this is these are these are the ways. This is the reasons why I'm running out of money all the time. You know, just go through all of your old items, like mainly groceries and beauty, maybe 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 home. I'd say groceries and beauty, and just look for the the two packs versions, the three and the four. It's literally just go through your old purchase history for the last three months, maybe for four or five, as long as you want to go, because usually the same items will just circulate in value. So there will be yeah, an item might be ten pounds six months ago, and then it goes to five, and it's an offer. Then it goes back to ten, then it goes to twelve, then it goes to three ninety nine, and it just circulates over time. You, you know, I originally thought that these items can't be out for more than like a year, but some like some of these items are all six months, but some of these items are out for five years, and they're just circulating the price. Um, and I've, 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 you know, it's really interesting. When it says, I used to say, oh, no, I've got the best price ever. Or, wow. And I'm like, it's been half the price, like at Christmas, but they obviously changed the way that it's received, and therefore they make it look like it's a special bargain or something. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so that's like two really good ways. Let me just check my notes. Um, yeah, to do it, and and actually, just, just seeing here, there's actually another way. So with Superdrug here. It doesn't really re uh, recognize like buy one get one half price. Buy one get one freeze. It might do. Now it doesn't always happen. Um, let's go into Holland and Barrett. So let's just visit the site. On Holland and Barrett, it would do like buy one get one half price. Yeah. So it doesn't recognize this. So what I sometimes do is just go into it, <coughs> like so. Now I don't really know which items you know are going to be good, so I'll just get the the HTML code or the H you know the uh, web address at the top. Just copy that. Now this is where I do do the custom URL. I don't do it very often. Uh, I think that's a, I forget which one it is. One of them two. And then I actually just type in cashback thirty three, whatever the percentage. It could be fifty percent. It could be thirty three percent. It could be thirty five. Sometimes I put thirty just to be safe, and then just and I scan. Is that gonna work? Yeah, and then I just go and double check the prices, and they're normally slightly out, but that's another way. And that way, you're gonna create uh, find products uh, from Holland and Barrett that a general scan on Holland and Barrett won't show. And now that's that's something a bit more obvious, but that's a, a, another little extra way to eke out a couple of potentials, even if you buy eight of an item. Oh, sorry, eight, two of like four, four items, so you get eight items. Still, still adds to the kitty, you know. I have I have many items. Uh, I have about one and a half thousand items. So it's not it's it's a, a lot for like a beginner, but it's not a lot for like an advanced seller. Um, and many of them are just twos, 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 fours, 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 four. You know, it's, it, they're not high numbers, but if I can sell five hundred items that are just like the odd ones and twos that I have, you know, if they sell two a month. Well, in a month, I can just do a thousand sales just from random items. You know, to me, it all adds up. And a lot of people overlook that. They want to buy 10 and have like 10 lines, 10 to 10. But I, I want to, you know, I do it the other way and just think if I can buy a hundred items a day, loads of them are just going to be in the background ticking through. So the ones I forget about, I have like, um, I say like the trickle through products. Um, they will just be items I forget about. Uh, they're good ROIs at, at the time, and even if they go down, they're still reasonable. Uh, they're not like 30%. They might be. They might be 100 at the time, and they go down to 50 because of a couple of other people do it. But they sell two a month or four a month, and I just leave them in the background, and I focus on the ones that I purchase more than say 10. And I l would look at those as like my my big sellers, and I'd like try to figure out the best way to optimize those sales. But on a bad day, or if I run out of stock, because obviously depending on how quick the box is booking, um, I will still have all those other ones in the background just ticking over. So yeah, that's what I do. Uh, so right, 
FBA was discovered and we are 25 minutes in, this is going to be a, a reasonably long one. Uh, oh well. So we'll just click off of what we just did. Now, what should I go over next? I'll go over, let me just move some of this, that's something I'll go over in a sec. So I'm going to go over Bookable VA. Now this is another thing I subscribe to. At the time I was paying £49 a month because I got in at the very, very beginning, literally the, the night that the webinar was um, done on the Secret Wealth Project group, Facebook group. Um, and I got in at the early price just because even if I didn't want it later, I'd rather get in early and just cancel it. Because as I was saying last year, I think, was it last year? Yeah, it must have been last year. Last year I was more experimenting. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, my, my expenses were like double what they are this year. Just because, at least for the first year, you should be, even if you're breaking even, but you're learning and you're figuring out everything because it's not, a, you know, business isn't one year. And if you are thinking business is a one year, you're almost not worth doing because, so what, what's it going to be like in eight years or ten years or four years or, you know, yes, I normally think now one, I think of one year segments, so and like a couple of little segments in between. So I basically, I, I base my goals and results over a year because that way it's fully reflective because it's a lot very seasonal with Amazon. So you've got to, if someone says, well, are you doing a lot of profit this month? I'm like, no, it's January. But as a whole, you know. Um, and I say that at the moment, I'm actually probably only using this uh, replenishing for about, 20%, 10%, because a lot of it at the moment is toys and games. Uh, not on Monday, actually, this is looking pretty good for it. you got uh, toys and games there, of course. Toys and games there. Beauty. I'm a little bit sceptical of some of the beauty products because you see, you know, beauty is one of those categories where you've got to be very careful. Even if it says you can sell it, it doesn't mean you can always sell it. So you've got to be a little bit, you got to do a lot of due diligence, not just a little bit, but more than what you would think. Uh, maybe look over the sellers, the seller guys, and uh, looking at all their restricted brands. I know it's mainly American, but gives you an insight to what the future may hold for the UK beauty brands. <coughs> so I know L'Oreal. I'm going to give you a L'Oreal example in a minute because I'm not actually selling it. Um, but I've heard some stuff about some L'Oreal products are getting clamped down on, and so I've basically just stopped selling. I've got, I think I've got one or two. Items. I've just got a couple of units left. I'm selling out, but once I do that, I probably won't replenish L'Oreal. Um, yeah, and it gives you all the information here. It's really, really straightforward. It's it gets popular. You get a link, populates for you. Uh, you just go through the source URLs and shows you the ROIs. And obviously, but this is this is what this this one is shared. But you can get ones that aren't shared by as many people and stuff like that. But for forty nine pound, I don't mind using this as again a filler. So I find the FBA wizard I just showed you is a filler. <coughs> it's clearing up all the back. I call it like the stuff, which, the skimming all the stuff on the side. Um, in two ways or three ways as I showed. And this is also another skim around the side. So my core sales are not through here. The ideas may have been through here. But my core sales, and this is just like the sort of <coughs> outer ring, which I was trying to say. And that's a ticking through the sales. Um, so I won't go into this too much. You know they they have quite cool videos. Karen Summer is the one who's created this, and she's she's really nice. Um, and you get a suspension, safeguard enabled. So if you actually sign up, you get this, get unsuspended. It's part of the package, and so that's you know I think it is a little bit cheaper for Secret Web Project members, but normally uh, it's 50, 20, sorry twenty pound. So you you're getting twenty pound added value, and if you get suspended, and you're paying this. You don't touch anything, um, send it all to Karen and she will help you sort it all out and she's really good. She seems to be helping a lot of people get uh, unsuspended when you may have not otherwise got unsuspended. So yeah, um, and that's that. Uh, yeah, she's, They're updating this, they've got Euro flip deals here and really cool things to um, help and also obviously you can go through all the historic information on the website on this page um, 
and sort of build up a bit of even as replenishables you could use it as a replenishable list you could go back about three months and work your way forward for whatever and just and see if the prices have gone back to that level and people have maybe forgotten about them stuff like that so you can use it for a couple of ways so let's just close this so another way oh, two sex my legs so let me just cross off what I've talked about so I don't go over it again we got that we got bookable VA okay so this is a the way that I look at my replenishables. Now, actually, recently my replenishables have been about sixty to eighty percent of my sales, which is crazy. I know you're probably thinking that's impossible. And I, this time last year, I would have done like one percent replenishables, like just by luck, just like clicked on the item. I've already decided. Oh, look at that! And I'm going to show you how to do it. Or, or, or how easy it is. So, what I usually do for Q4 is I create replenishable uh, tabs. So I'll create this year. I'll create groceries, beauty, toys, and any other items. Maybe, maybe other. And I'll put all of the items I know that are replenishable through the year and at Christmas time may become may may be on offer basically because usually in Christmas everything's on offer um, and I look at the items that I know that are on offer the most I'll, I'll still look over the other items to see if maybe just for Christmas they're putting them as offer uh, but that way I can go over a list <coughs> of items and I'll show you exactly what I mean what sort of items so this is literally just uh, this is from this time well this time last year ish but what I'm going to do is quickly go to store and I searched it earlier um, that's clear also a second. Clear. Super drug. Boom. These are some of the items I sold last year. I had a quick look at some of them. Um, and this is just literally my purchase sheet. It's nothing special. Buy, sell, fees, margins. Blah, 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 blah. I don't use Prep Center. I have my own Prep Center. Uh, Mr. FBA UK. Prep Service. So I don't do this, obviously. Uh, I don't enter if it's on credit card. Yeah, I don't bother doing that. Received, yes, do received. So I know, I know how well my purchases are doing. So if I know there's only a couple more items to be received, I'm have, I'm going to look to start purchasing a higher quantity or higher volume or whatever. So I use it as a as a bit of a guide or you know. But if I've got loads to receive, I know that I'm waiting for a lot of stock, which is good. So on, so on, so on. So let's go for an item. So if you go over, I wouldn't say toys as much. Maybe Christmas time you can go over toys. Here we are. Is this the one? Yeah. So this is this date of this is July. Literally, it's like a year ago. Wow, nearly. On Superdrug. It is see it's six twenty nine, but actually it's two for nine pounds. So you would have not got this in the scan. So obviously nine pounds divided by two. And I'm using the calculator, but just for effect, make sure it's correct. Four pounds fifty. Okay. So back to the sheet. Well, you can see that I did purchase it for three fifty at the time for nine and it's selling at that well okay it's not huge anymore so let's have a little look now actually you can see here there's a newer version of pack of three but so you you could use that as a little like okay pack of three but three for 17 you could you could have a look and maybe um purchase for that but we'll look at this one for now so we've got the item obviously you know the sales this is a l'oreal item so i'm actually not selling it now, I could sell it, and I have sold it in the past, literally like a year ago. But after what I've heard, now the good, good way to f see if, like, has there ever been infringements, or, like, if either it's been in hazmat, or is it, it's either been in hazmat, or it's been, maybe some infringements against it, so people have dropped off the listings, and then people come back on, is do you see a huge dip. Now, there's I can't see any obvious huge dip. Not really. If it goes from that ten to down here three, like almost instantly. So like by then, uh, do not buy that item. Like I don't buy items like that because it shows that either some, something's happened in the past, meaning it's dropped. Loads of sellers dropped off, and I usually think it's more infringements than it's going to be hazmat. I because hazmat it doesn't seem to drop everyone off the listing straight away. So I can I've got two, two two items in hazmat, but there's sellers who are selling 
uh, fulfilled by Amazon, but it's, it's under hazmat for me. And all I do with hazmat items is leave him and wait. <laughs> Basically, just wait, and eventually they come back on. I haven't had any items that I've had to recall, or sometimes I've I've submitted that S whatever that sheet is, material sheet or an exemption sheet. Uh, and then I've just been accepted back on the listing. No problem, it's easy. Just fill in that sheet. Or if you're going to make sure you put in the battery information, it's pretty easy. Just research it on Google, do the calculations on your calculator, write all the numbers down, and type it in. Boom, done. 15 minutes. I know it's a bit of a faff, but it stops you getting potentially hazmated or, you know, something like, something like that. Uh, but yeah, usually within a month, I know it's a bit, of a, a bit annoying. In the month, I just leave it, and my items are allowed to be sold again for all my hazmat items. And that's like over the last year. It's not often, but yeah. Uh, and then I would obviously type in 450 here. So I'm back to the actual video. 27%, I think, comes out as yeah. I mean, it's not it's not great, but that is including some VAT that I have to pay. So yeah, you that would be more for non-VAT sellers. Um, but I didn't sell this. Um, so, so that is an item that you can. It's twenty-seven percent. It's not bad. You know, if it goes back up to, back up to here, eleven, and you, you can see it's been selling at around the nine higher than what it. Oh no, no. Um, eleven here, eleven here. So you can you can buy a, you could buy a few and hold out for the eleven pound mark if you wanted. Um, but it's up to you. I mean, I I wouldn't buy it just because I'm spending too much money. But if you, you know, you, if if I've got too much money, I'll buy twenty-seven percent all day long. I've got five grand sitting around because I can't find items. I'll even take twenty percent if the number of sales is decent. If this was, you know, what ranking is this? Thirty-four. Not great, but the sales are decent. And the amount of sellers. Let's say you've got ten sellers. You're going to have a handful. So these are the only two sellers. Well, maybe three. So them two. Hang on. Okay, three sellers that I can see at, at 9.78. You know, and there's others that are obviously way up here because they're my support. So I'll take that one. I wouldn't worry about that. wouldn't worry about that. Mm, the others are close -ish. So yeah, this person's 11, 11 something. 11. And that's what it was selling at over here. So they're just waiting because they know that it's sell a bunch off and sales are going to be ticking through at that 11 pound mark. Uh... I don't know what I was actually talking about, I just sort of went off on one. But yeah, okay. Um, so that's literally showing you that from my old items, and I I did purchase this item many times afterwards. Um, this is not just, this is just one that I found straight away. And you can see up here actually, sir. So it's there, third, and I must have bought some more down on here. And I would, use, I would copy that whole item, and I'd paste it into a potential replenishable for beauty. And I'll keep doing this for all the items. And I built a bit of a, like a rapport up in my head, or a bit of a, like a sh balance sheet, sort of, of the items that have come back on and off. So when I'm going through my uh, purchase sheet for the last six months, I know every item, and that's a bit sad. But you know, you, for example, you can take it seriously or not. Like, do you, you, do you, it's up to you. If you want to put the hours in, put hours in. If you don't, you don't. But I'll go through and I'll click, click, click. It takes me like 15, 10 minutes a week, 15 minutes a week, just to double check all the items that I know are good sellers and they seem to just go up and down and I can still sell them for good money. Uh, and yeah, and there's loads of items. Build, over a year, you'll, you know, you'll build up a good, a good selection of items. And yes, it won't always be the same. Over time, people jump on and then the item becomes non-sellable. But then you find more items and you, keep, you just keep rep repeating the process. Um, so another way, let's just get rid of that and that. And that. Another way to do it is to let me just make sure. Go on to this is what I do every week, once a week. Go to orders. Now on it's every Monday, I go for the last seven days, search, go down to the bottom here, a hundred, go. Obviously, and 
I will. I know all the items that I'm selling, pretty much, apart from those sort of subcategory items. Uh, yes, I know it's going to be blurred in half this video, but obvious reasons. Um, and I will just take the ASINs, and I'll go Control Find or Command Find, and I'll just search the ASIN, and it comes up with a number. Now, as long sometimes you have more than more pages, more than one page. This is just my, still my pending, so this isn't actually my cleared sales, and I'll see how many I've done over the last seven days. Um, I know which ones are good and which ones are bad. You can do it for everyone. That's so that one sold one item. Uh, no, you can't see it in the corner, but it's there. This is sold four, so on, so on, and and I also then do it for my all orders. It's annoying that you've got to do this stupid thing here. Hundred items. Um, and again. Um, but instead of just doing that copy and paste, you can get a VA. So all of this, I'm telling you, this could all be done by a VA, and the VA wouldn't even really be, cert but be sourcing. So I'm looking to get a VA just for one day a week at the moment to do all this um, once a week. But yeah, yes, they're searching in um, uh, on FBA Wizards a little bit, but they're not really okay it, it, even if you had to do it yourself that, that little bit at the beginning just just to get the items but they're basically just going over data rather than searching and having to pick out good finds so you could get doing the basics in FBA wizard and all of this is just you know extra so then I'll basically put all this into an Excel so they could get all this data from the ASIN over the last seven days put it onto Excel from your all orders up here and your pending orders which are currently not cleared which could be cancelled, but as I say, no, they're not going to be. Uh, put them in Excel every, let's say, Monday morning, so you can have a clear visibility of what is selling and how many. Um, you could you could you could put week by week and see if there's any trends. Maybe at the beginning of the month or the end of the month. Obviously, at the end of the month more sales, and then you could potentially still buy those items. You know, you might have only bought eight, and you might have sold four in a week. So you might want to buy another four, um, and so on. And that way you you're not missing anything you know it's very easy to think ah oh, no uh, that's it but and you forget what you've bought and what you sold and before you know it you can be missing out on hundreds of or thousands of pounds you know definitely in Q4 you can be missing thousands of thousands of thousands of thousands of thousands of thousand pounds just on the items you've just forgot that exists and you know you've not you don't know you don't know a way to you don't know a really good way of sort of protecting the items falling off the bottom. Do you kind of see what I'm trying to say? Uh, almost like a little force field to make sure you pick them all back up because over the years, or over a year, so you can pick all those little ones you're picking up and you're not forgetting about, and you know you've got some sort of buffer for. Can create can be thirty percent of your replenishables or whatever you want to sort of have. So that's a great way of doing it. <coughs> and another great way is you can go. Well, I have BQ. And on BQ, yes, you can set your reprices like you would with a re reprice. And a great, a great thing with reprices, they can go back up with the Amazon repricer. There is an, unless they have improved it, if you set your bottom at say nine ninety nine and your tops fourteen ninety nine, if it goes down to twelve fifty tomorrow, and then song obviously matches that, and then the day after it goes down to eleven ninety nine, it's never going to go back up to that fourteen ninety nine mark. So if there's a couple of sellers doing that. And your all your bottom line is all nine ninety nine. Then it's just going to eventually go to nine ninety nine, and then it's stuck at nine ninety nine until all of you sell out, two of you sell out, whatever. But with your repricer, if if all of us are on a reset, which is you set it a timer to say every night it resets to your top price. So so let's say it reset to two fourteen ninety nine. Um, all all of us let's say there's five people on the listing. All five of us reset to fourteen ninety nine. But let's say that Amazon accepts fourteen ninety nine as a reasonable buy box, so all of the items now are going to be selling at fourteen ninety nine. And even if it does go down, if people are you know if you are getting sales in the morning because obviously as the day goes on, the buy box usually goes down because the systems are are, are lowering the price because to, to, everyone else is trying to just make sales you know so everyone's lowering. But I I can make I can do a sale of an electrical. Product in the morning at say eight for like thirty nine ninety nine because that's my top, and then I can make a sell in the evening of the same item for 
31 99 you know and th that's just once now if you're doing that a handful of times across a handful of items then you're basically paying for your repricer for free but at least you know it's always going to be doing that and and, and making profit so i have said it before you make profit from a repricer not always but I've had I've noticed like some really decent items that have sold for like ten to twenty pound more because it's been bought early in the day from this strategy. And also it gives you this. So it shows me my buy box win percentage and listings and I have all of the actual market prices, not US, it's like all of these, and I've just tried trying out all the Euro side. Uh, and the fees in these, the fee calculator where you can see what you're make, making is a bit off. France is correct. Italy's a bit low, Spaniards or Spain is a bit low, and Germany is definitely low. So when you're actually looking at your like 30% ROI on BQ, be careful because that is on de definitely on Germany, where which is the biggest marketplace after the UK on the eurozone. That's that's it's like two dollars, sorry, two euros ish out on the fulfillment, I believe. But I've all I've done is I've compared the summary sheet of my purchases and clear transactions against what this is saying what this is saying to see the profit and the ROI comes out and sort of got it from there basically just looked at the fees on my, my cleared things and compared it to this but it gives you your best selling items per revenue in the last 30 days you know if you want to do 20 click the 20 and it um, and if you want to see quantities here in the last 30 days, so you know, I've done 105, 77, 64, da 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 7, you know, at, what we were talking about before, 10, you know, all of those items from 10 would be the ones I focus on, and all the others would just trickle through even now. 7 not too bad, is it? Um, and I, I, I can get, okay, so if I want to look at like the last 90 days, 3 months, and you can get a bit of a gauge of what's selling. And from that, you can figure out how many you might need. Maybe you want to up your quantities. Maybe you need to lower your quantities. You know, these are all little things. And it maybe oh, I can't believe that I've sold you know fifty of those, that item. I didn't realise. And you're picking up all the loose ends. You know that item. Maybe that item. And you can keep going down, down, down to up to like two sales. And you can pick up all the two sales. If you do a hundred items, just at two items a month. You know, if you're making five, ten pounds, you know, maybe not ten pounds, but if you're making whatever on them, it, it sets your money that, you know, as long as you're spreading, you know, the aim is to spread that your listings. You want more listings so that you have more buy box visibility. Because if you have more buy box vis visibility, that means by, ch by prob probability will state that you should get more sales because people are on seeing you, you as the buy box more frequently. If you, you know, because obviously, as soon as someone else is on it, you can't. They're not going to buy for you. So if you've got more more items and more visibility of the buy box, even if you do fall off the buy box on some, you're still showing up on all the others. So you'll make more money. Um, so yeah, that was that one, right? What's the next thing? Hmm, <sighs> exhausting, this isn't it? All right. Oh, I've got a couple of bonuses. This is. Um, and the way these are bonuses is it, I wanted to, for example, get into another category. I'm not going to go into the specifics, of course. I wanted to start looking into other categories because in the groups I've noticed that people are saying doing a lot of sales in X, Y, Z categories. Now, if you're not ungated in everything, and I mean pretty much everything, and I, I, I mean, I'm ungated on potentially, say, Rolexes, I can sell a Rolex, but... I would never sell a Rolex, of course. I can I would never sell Apple and Samsung, which I can sell. I don't know anything that I can't sell. But there's a lot of stuff that is just ridiculous that you would even try. For me, uh, you don't need to. That's the thing. It's like you start at the bo bottom and you don't want to jump to the top and sell, be selling 100 Rolexes and, no, and nothing else. Because, yes, you're going to make, well, potentially good money, but the risk's higher. So you start at the bottom and just work your way up. And as you go up, obviously, you need to then venture into maybe potentially slightly more risky items or potentially higher risky items that because you're not really familiar with the market or the, the category but it, that's the best way to go which will prolong your Amazon account health uh, you won't get any so many issues and so on and so on uh, yeah so that's how I see it but definitely beauty groceries health and personal care personal care appliances and toys and games obviously the standard 
those ones you be you should be selling it. Um, and so like this time last year, I was selling eighty two percent of toys and games. That's why, you know, that just shows a beginner status, really, status, whatever. That that's you know. But this year, I think I'm in like eight eight percent in toys and games right now. Because that's not where you want to be. That's not where you make your money. It is in Q4, and it's your entry point for beginners. Uh, but that's yeah, that's, 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 I can go into that in the video. So the bonuses. One quick bonus is what you could do here. So we're going to type in here Disney. Let's just say Disney. Uh, we're going to go and find a random item. Oh god, um, something that's actually a real toy. So make sure this is actually a seller. Well, okay, it is Amazon, but we're going to click it. It's a sponsor as well. It's just Amazon is not sponsoring. Probably not selling any. Um. Well, yeah, they are okay. So that's the so you might just type in. Really, actually, I might speak to Zach to see if he can have this and automatically populated because it doesn't actually matter. But you can see here it's selling for sixteen pounds twenty one in Italy. Yes, there are higher fees, so it might not even make a difference. But every item I check, I actually have a quick glance at this. So when I'm, you know, as we I was showing you how to check the items, type in the money, da 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 da. But also I check here to see if there's any potentials to sell another because there's items that I've not realised and they sell great in Italy, like. You know, Italy and Spain don't do much, but there's some items I found and they're great. Uh, and only because I found that checking here, I'm like, oh wow. Um, and they're doing loads of sales. So yes, you might not. You might only make a little bit more. But okay, say that you're making, let's say you're making four sales in the UK. Let's say you're making four sales in the UK, and you're about okay. I buy four because I only want to have a month for a month. So you only want to sell four a month. So you buy four because you don't want to have too many. But then you can see in Italy or Spain or France, maybe you can sell on every single one and you're making um, a bit more than what you would make in the UK. So I use the repricer to do that and make sure that it's reasonable. So instead of just buying four, you can actually now buy as many as you want. Say that it was cost four. Uh, let's say it's cost, it's cost two. So these, let's say we're going to use, there's no ranking in Spain here. Reasonable ranking in Italy, probably not great because um, it's Italy as well, so the marketplace is smaller. Let's say you're going to buy four for UK and let's say you're going to buy four for Italy. So you're actually now buying eight. So you've because you, you've got more population to cover, so you're selling more. Uh, and that's just a little technique, like little techniques you can do across not all your listings, but some listings to maximize your sales. Um, so yeah, that's another little, a little tip. <coughs> so that's you know a little bonus I guess and these are all little if you add all of these together you can you can just buy some stupid amount of stock just because you've you're covering all bases not just one two this is I'm going off over 10 points and yeah some aren't as as valid as others some aren't as good as others but yeah sure now <clears throat> another way now I don't know if this is going to be seen as controversial or whatever because I know what people get funny over stuff um, but I really wanted to sell in a category, and I was a bit con well. I'd done scans and stuff, and I'd I'd done my pickings and stuff, um, but I wasn't quite sure. I was like, where you know, um, it just wasn't coming off for me. The, the, the percentages that were on my reports weren't high enough. So I let's just go into now. This is not the category. This is not going to be the seller. And I'm sorry if this is you as a seller. I'm just doing this as an example, and it's got no relation to what I've actually done. But let's say uh, this has got 10 F. Let's just go to an item that I know. That's a reasonable item. This one, maybe. I'm just going to take ages, isn't it? Okay, hopefully there's something that I can just click on. Let's try this. Doesn't really matter who it is as a seller. I'm just going to show you how you do it. Um, but say you you, you you get used to the sellers that are selling on Amazon. So you see the same names popping up on your listings, don't you, all the time? Um, maybe not everyone, every listing, but you see them. You, you want 
I always, I'm intrigued to, to know, one, what they're buying, two, for, for two reasons. One, because I'm interested to see what they're selling. Maybe it's going to give me a bit of an insight to what I can sell. And two, it, it, it gives me a bit of security knowing that it seems that I can sell it. So I used to be so scared of beauty and I would not touch beauty after like one item. So one item. Someone said they got something, uh, polish the infringement on some random item, and it scared me. So the whole, like, next four or five months, I saw no beauty. Then I started looking at the sellers I knew. Oh, so you, you sort of get the feel for certain sellers that you know. And I started looking into these, what they were selling, and realised that I was just being too scared. So let's just pick a random seller. That is FBA. I don't know. And I, I normally look at the total ratings. I'll just see if there's anyone. That's not FBA. Now, obviously, some of these people can be wholesale and all that sort of thing, so it's, you know, it's an unknown. Um, I have no idea. I've never, I've never seen a seller before, so let's just click. And with online arbitrage these days, everyone knows that pretty much you, um, everyone sells the same stuff, unless you're doing wholesale. So it's no, it's no real secret what people are selling, you know. And like you click to, yeah, so I didn't explain. I click through to their storefront. So they've been in business a while because they've done quite a lot of ratings. They seem to be a good seller. So for me, I can give that a tick. Yeah. Now I click in. I don't know if they're doing private label as well. I don't know what's going on. And I can see in here all the stuff they're selling. Now say that I want to sell more in, I don't know, toys or something, which you wouldn't want to because, well, you might do at Christmas, but, but you know, for other categories, you can just get an idea. So, oh, okay, Hot Wheels... Da, da. Now, what I might want to do is, okay, so I'm intrigued, where are they getting these from? You know, let's go under here. That's a, that's a good item. Wow. Let's just pick something like... I really want to find an item that will work. I'll use that. Okay. <coughs> just give it a sec. So yeah, these are all plugins it, sh it should have. Right, let's just click here. Now you might not find anything, but I'm going to copy that. So find your, your category that you're looking for. Go into Google. Copy and paste the item. Now this is, yes, it's copy and paste, but this can be done by a VA and as long as you are not looking at every item that someone's selling, you can, you know, you're specialising, but you can, you can not spend that long. So we're just going to click through here. So this is Neuros. Interesting. Um, yeah. So that's not a good item. But, you know, let's just click through. There's the... So, you know, if it was... So what you want, what you want to find, if it was selling at Asda or something, that's what you want to be looking at. So it doesn't seem that this sort of item is selling it as does, so that's, that's just how it is. Uh, and scroll down, scroll down, you know, I know this item. Say you want to know this item. Obviously everyone knows this one, very simple, obvious. 21 quid actually is selling at the moment, so that's, that's quite a nice price for that one. So that's an item that I... Oh, what the hell? So we're going to go ahead and paste it into Google. Oops, I think I've just like mistyped vote. But yeah, okay, that's the cute thing. Now on offer, this item is selling for is it sold out? That can sell the that can sell for about eleven ninety nine, twelve ninety nine, ten ninety nine, ten fifty. Um but I've found that now because I know I'm a, I've got an insight. So oh I'm clicking through too many. I've got an insight. I'm like, okay, I like Disney, it's a really, really popular product. Where are they buying this from? And this isn't just this person. This is just showing you this person. But, um, you know, well, yeah. But another thing you need to be careful of here, I just remembered, is it says 21.30. And it's not 21.30. Now, if you click through, it shows you storefront of that seller. But it says here, one new. And it's not one new, is there? There was many. So this is showing you what they're selling it for. So if you're doing like an affiliate website or something, and you want to, or, you know, maybe you're doing a Facebook, Facebook shop, but you were diverting people through to these items, you would actually be selling it at a profit 
because this item, if we go on Amazon, let's actually type in this item. So I did wonder if there's ever a way of actually creating anything. Because once you're on the Amazon website, okay, so it's slightly, it's actually not much different. But you can see a 2118, there's something for 2130. But you will find that items are massively out if they're quite different to the current buy box. So be careful. So always get the ASIN from there, which is just from a plugin. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is, but if you want to know, I can let you know. Type in the ASIN obviously at the top. Comes up with the item, and then you compare the price. And if the price is basically the same, that's where you would you would use that price. So click into it, then you would use that. And obviously, if that was at like ten fifty, I mean, it's a sale on that Disney. Then you would use that. Let's just get out of this. So yeah, uh, and you know, say that you want to sell Disney. You want to know what people are selling at Disney. I go through all the Disney items. And see, and you can you can do that with every seller if you wanted. <coughs> you could spend days and days and days and days. But you know, it was for me just intriguing more than anything. And and you might be like, oh, I was going to sell that. Now I'm not. You know. Oh, I was going to sell that. Now I'm not. And it's really interesting to see what other people sell. Um, getting a feel for what's out there. Right, let me just check I've covered everything. Oh, this is exhausting. One hour. Oh. And anyone that's uh, stayed through to the end here, awesome. I'm exhausted. I probably wouldn't even stay through to now. But uh, I guess it depends on how determined you are to eke out those extra sales, eh? Um, yeah. I think that covered everything. So, yeah. Hopefully... It's informative. You know, I don't actually plan these videos, I just go for it. Where's the fun in that if you just uh, script everything, you know? Um, eventually, everything comes out. So, yeah, thanks for stu um, tuning in if you've been here for an hour. And hopefully, everything is covered. Now, that is my 10 step to, 10 step to sourcing, I guess. Um, or 10 sourcing techniques that you can do to optimize your business. Uh, also safeguard your business, uh, making sure nothing is missed, uh, and all of that can be done by a VA. And I'm I'm pretty sure within one day, one day a week, that could all be done. Now, if you're paying fifty dollars a day, or even less, how much would you be? Just, I say it was about. I say you say you're doing three hundred dollars a month for VA. That's the average cost. You divide that. I suppose by thirty days. I don't know, would it be thirty days? We've got the weekends, so that's so there's 22 day, 300 divided by 22. You're paying them like 15, 20 dollars a day. What's that? 15 quid a day, 8 and 20 pound a day. So you're spending 100 pound a month, or 80 pound a month for a VA, and they're sourcing you that much potential. It's all I'm gonna, you know. And yes, you have to subscribe to FBA Wisdom and stuff, and I'll put all the links down below to what I've used and all that sort of thing. But yeah. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Hopefully you liked it. Smash a thumbs up if you did. Comment if you need, want any further clarification because I know it's quite... I, I do go into it quite... I, I speak quite fast, but if I didn't, it's going to go on for like three hours. Yeah, so even if you just picked up a little bit, hopefully you've got value. And yeah, see you on the next video. Ciao.